I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot of home studio videos out here on YouTube. The thing that I've noticed with all of them, those homes seem really, really big. So, I wanted to talk about six ways. Yeah, that's right. Six ways to get pro drum sounds in a tiny room. So just some clarification on my room that I'm always recording in. Any room with this black wall that I have, this is a 10 by 10 box. There's not a lot of space to work with once you put a desk and a full size drum set in here, but hey, I make it work. First thing I would say, find a spot in your room that the drums sound best in. Pick a drum, I chose my floor tom. I always struggle with my floor tom sounds. And I just walked around the room, placed it somewhere, and then would hit it, see how it sounds in the room. You can even mic it if you feel like you have the time. I didn't have the time when I did it. If you notice in my videos, my drums move a lot in this room. Honestly, at this point with how many videos I've done, you've probably seen every single part of my room. Cause now you can see my door. Yeah, it's not that big. My drum set actually is in the closet. I took the doors off and pushed my throne as far back as I could get without actually having my throne on the wall. Find a spot that works in your room, make sure you have floor space that you can work with and still walk in it, but you want them in somewhere that's going to sound the best for the recordings that we're trying to do. Number two. There it goes, acoustic treatment. So my first room that I had, I had foam on the walls and then I got some packing blankets, some blue moving blankets from Walmart, stuck them up to the wall with some thumbtacks. It took a lot of thumbtacks, but it was safe. And that was my acoustic treatment. Eventually I figured out Walmart sold these. This is not sponsored by Walmart, I promise. I just am on a budget. Movable clothes racks, like a, like clothing racks to hang your clothes on. And so what I did was I got one of those, draped one of those moving blankets over it. It became a portable sound baffle. So some of my videos were recorded on that. It wasn't until I got in here that I made these acoustic panels I have right here. There's, there's one right there and there's one back there. It used to be on the wall in front of me, but I wanted more wall space. It wasn't too difficult to make. I will say they seem to do a little bit in the room, but not as much as I thought they would. So acoustic treatment, just put stuff in the room, whether that's a chair, desk, you got a stuffed animal collection, put it in the room. You just need stuff to dampen the sound and kind of bounce stuff off of your walls, especially when you're working with a room that is essentially a big box. Number three, play like you want the record to sound. That means tuning the way you hit the drums, self mixing. Really? That's how we doing it? Tuning, self mixing. Oh, the hi-hat's going to be too loud right now. When you listen back to your recording, guess what? Play the hi-hat quieter. Don't just move the fader. Play it quieter next time. The more you can do with yourself and the drum set in the room outside of the computer, the better it's going to sound in the computer and the less work you're going to have to do. We need these drums to be tuned where we want them. We want to play the way that we want it to sound out the gate, not afterwards. My phone just keeps vibrating. I, I don't even have that many friends, honestly. Also with that, if you're going to run plugins and stuff, Use the plugins while you're recording. That's something I didn't do till recently, but it really does help you figure out how you want to play those parts. Four, come, come on, four, four. Mic height. I've done a lot of research trying to figure out how high to put my overheads and where to put my close mics. In these tiny rooms, I figured out close mics are your friend. Overheads kind of just give you the bigger sound. I don't have a cloud or anything on my ceiling is very low and so sometimes overheads are not the best sound I get. So the overheads kind of don't play as much of a part into what I do. The close mics become my friend. They are hearing the drums themselves and not really the rest of the room that you got going on. The overheads are getting a lot more room and that's what we don't want. Make sure you're putting decent mics on your kit. They don't have to be amazing, just decent and make sure that your tuning is good, make sure that you're playing them well and you know how to hit your drums. Five. I got five on it. Use EQ to sculpt out the room. Adding too much in your EQ can start to make that room sound come out really badly. I always try to cut. There's a few that I will only add to on occasion. I will add low end to my bass drum I'm on carpet and my room is somewhat dead and small. I add that just a little bit. You never want to do a huge bump, just enough to, to feel it, feel it in your heart, you know? <laughs> really? What? 
What is happening? I'm just dinging all over the place. And the other one that I'll add to, I'll sometimes add to my snare, just some top end, just to give it a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more sizzle on top. And last but not least, number six, six, <laughs> but not least, number six. Be inspired by other songs that you hear and other drummers, but don't compare yourself. Don't compare yourself to the person who's in a multi-million dollar studio. Guess what? You're lucky to have the bedroom you're in, or you're lucky to have the shed that you're in, or the basement. Be happy with the sound you have. Embrace the sound that this room is giving you. Let that become the drum sound that you specialize in. Like I said, I'm always in small rooms. That tight, dry sound works really well in here. If I'm trying to get that big, bottom, reverby, echoey chamber thing, that's gonna be a lot of plug-in work for me. That's all the echo I got. I got nothing. It's pretty dry in here. Trust your room. Let your room guide your sound. Be grateful for the room you have. Learn from other recordings that you're listening to, but don't compare yourself to them. They are not recording in your room. So like I said, that's all six things that I... Wait. So that is six things that I've learned recording in very, very small bedrooms. I wanna thank my wife for letting me have a room in our house to play this loud instrument right here. If you got any other ideas or questions, leave them below. I try to reply when I can, but yeah, talking videos are still kind of new to me, so subscribe, comment, like, bye drummers.